Good afternoon, good evening. Hey, welcome back for another Filling Station service. I'm your host, Pastor Matthew, and I'm super excited as we start on another lesson in our Good Life series. Today, we have an exciting lesson about friendship. We're going to talk about David and Jonathan and how they had a great friendship. So here to get us started with today's lesson is Mindy the Mouse to tell you what's up. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Oh, oh, hey, hey guys, Mindy the Mouse here from the game Mouse Trap, ready to tell you what's up. Hey, today we're talking about how God can give us friends and that will help us in our times of need. We're going to talk today about David and Jonathan and how they had a special friendship. And when David was under attack multiple times by King Saul, Jonathan helped David and David was able to stay safe. And it was all because God gave David a good friend. And we can trust that God will give us friends that can help us in our times of need. We just have to trust and follow him and choose the right friends to be with. The ones that are going to influence us to do the right things and to follow after him. So anytime, and I mean anytime, someone asks you what's up, you tell them. God gives friends. Stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. God gives friends. All right, Mindy the Mouse here. I'll see you next time. Tell me what's up. That's right. God gives friends. Today we're talking about how God can give us friendships in our life that can help us to not only just have someone by our side, but also to fulfill the purposes that he has for our lives. We're talking today about David and Jonathan and how God gave David this friend and Jonathan, who Jonathan was willing to do anything for David. He would even die for David. He was willing to go so far as Jonathan was next in line to be king, but he was willing to give that up all because he knew that God wanted David to be the next king. He was a good friend. Let's talk about some different friendships that we see in life. You know, um, sometimes friendships, they're, they're good when they're paired together properly. So like we have ketchup and mustard, right? Those go great together. It's like a perfect friendship. There is also cinnamon. What do you think that pairs well with? That's right, sugar. Cinnamon and sugar, they pair together greatly. Um, oh, and what about this one? I got pepper here. What do you think goes with pepper? How about salt? We got salt and pepper. And uh, you know what salt and pepper goes great on? Mac and cheese. And it's a great friendship between the two. They both work together to enhance the flavor of mac and cheese. However, you know what looks similar to salt? Sugar. I mean, don't these two look pretty similar? They look really similar, but do you think I would have the same effect if I put sugar and pepper on my mac and cheese? I don't think so. You see, God wants us to choose friends that, that correspond with what we need to do in his purposes for our lives. If we choose someone that we don't pair up well with, and we choose someone that's going to influence us to make wrong choices, and they're not going to help us in our purpose that God has for our lives, then what can happen is is if I put that pepper and sugar on this mac and cheese, it would ruin it. And we can ruin our lives by choosing the wrong friends and going down the wrong paths. Instead, we need to choose the right friends, the ones that God has designed for us to have community with and relationship with that are gonna drive us towards his purpose for our lives. Let's open up this service with a quick word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this time that we have together today. God, I ask that you would speak to each and every one of our hearts. Help us to see that you have friends that can help push us towards you. And that when we choose the right friends, that we won't be led down the wrong paths, that we won't make the wrong choices because of the wrong influences, but instead we can have friends that will push us closer to you and the purposes that you have for our lives. We thank you for that in your holy and mighty name. Amen. All right. Well, hey, check out this memory verse song. Um, this is our fourth week singing it, so you should hopefully know it by now. Sing along. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need to thank Him for all He has done. Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Yeah, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Yeah, Philippians 4, 6. Yeah. All right.
right, let's read that verse one more time. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Philippians 4, 6. Today we're talking about how God gives us friends. And when God gives us friends, uh, that can help us to fulfill the purposes that he has for our lives. But sometimes it can be hard to make friends. And this verse talks about how we shouldn't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. If we pray and say, God, would you bring the right people into my life, the right friends, those that are going to push me towards you and help me make right choices, we can trust that God will do that every time. Let's think about that as we go into this time of praise and worship. Choreography Chloe, and I need you to stand up for today's worship warm ups. Now, we're gonna start with our hands in the air and we're gonna wave them like we just don't care. Now, we're gonna touch our toes all the way down. And now, we're gonna do five jumping jacks one, two, three, four, five. All right, you're ready to worship Jesus today. <laughs> Tell me what's up. 
That's right, God gives friends. Today we're looking in 1 Samuel chapter 18 through 20. We're gonna talk about a friendship that God gave to David. You see, last week we talked about how God looks at our hearts and how God chose David, even though he was the youngest, maybe even the weakest in his family. Um, he chose David as the next king over Israel. Now here's the deal. That doesn't mean that David became king right away. There was still a king in place whose name was Saul. And at this time, the, the Israelites, they were under attack by a group of people called the Philistines. And the Philistines had a mighty giant named Goliath. Now, every one of the Israelites was too scared to fight Goliath, except for one person. Do you know who that person was? That's right. It's David. David, he decided that he was not going to let the Philistines bully them any longer. He decided to stand up and he conquered Goliath. He defeated Goliath. Now, after this, um, Saul, he congratulated David and brought him in and he met Saul's son, Jonathan. Now, David and Jonathan, the Bible says they immediately became like best friends. Have you ever met someone before and just immediately everything clicked and you guys were just great friends? Well, that's what it was like for Saul or for David and Jonathan. They just immediately became best friends. And David actually, he would, he gave uh, or Jonathan actually gave David some of his stuff. He gave him one of his best robes. He gave him a bow and some arrows, a sword. He gave him a bunch of gifts because he was saying, David, I want to be friends with you forever. Well, you see, David, he was next in line to be king, but not everyone knew that. And, and God had anointed David to be the next king, but technically it was still King Saul. And according to tradition, Saul's son, Jonathan, should have become the next king. Well, David and Jonathan were really good friends. And as David grew older, he became a commander of Saul's army. And David, he began to take out all of Israel's enemies. The people began to love David. They began to chant for him in the streets. They talk about how he was greater than King Saul. And this made King Saul really scared of David. King Saul realized that the people were beginning to love David. And he was worried that his son Jonathan wasn't going to be able to become king because they were going to make David king. This made King Saul very jealous. And so there were times that Saul would actually attack David. And David, every time by the grace of God, he escaped and he was safe. And so thankfully, David was safe. But eventually, King Saul, he realized that he wasn't able to, to kill David. But he knew that Jonathan was close to David. So do you know what Saul asked Jonathan to do? Saul asked Jonathan to go and to kill David. He said, you can get close to him. He'll never see it coming. And do you know what Jonathan did? Jonathan said, King Saul, dad, father, why would I kill David? What has he ever done wrong to you? And when Saul thought about it, David had never done anything wrong. He was just jealous. King Saul was jealous of David and he wanted to kill him because he was worried about the throne. And so Jonathan talked his father out of it, but he went and he told David what was going on. He said, my father wanted to kill you. And David immediately, he said, Jonathan, have I ever done anything wrong? If so, he told Jonathan, if I've done something wrong against your father, go ahead and kill me. I'll take the punishment. But Jonathan said, no, you've not done anything wrong. And Jonathan cared about David so much. He was such good friends that he vowed to David that he would do whatever it took to protect him. Well, later on, there was, there was this festival coming up that normally David would go attend. It was called the Moon Festival. And, and David was worried that King Saul would try to kill him there. And so David and Jonathan came up with this plan. David was going to hide in, in a field and Jonathan was going to go to this festival. And when Jonathan arrived on the first day, David wasn't there. And so Saul thought, you know, maybe there was something that was going on and David couldn't make it. But then on day two of the festival, when David didn't arrive, Saul went to Jonathan and he said, Jonathan, where is David at? And David or Jonathan, he said, he said that David wasn't able to make it and immediately King Saul snapped. He wanted to kill David. So here's what Jonathan did. Jonathan left the party and he went out to the field where David was hiding. And he had told him that he would give him a sign. He said that if he was supposed to run, he would shoot arrows out into the field and he would have a servant boy go get him. And he said that if he told the servant boy to keep running for the arrows, that David needed to run. But if he told the servant boy to come closer to retrieve the arrows, that David was safe and he could come. So Jonathan went out and he shot the arrows in the field. And when the servant boy was out looking for the arrows, he said, keep running, keep going farther and you'll find them. And then after the servant boy left, David came out of hiding. And Jonathan had told David what his father had done, that his father wanted to kill him at the festival. And so, so David knew that he was in trouble. So him and Jonathan, they, they said their goodbyes and they, Jonathan did everything that he could 
to protect David. And because of it, David eventually became king someday. You see, God gave David this friend in Jonathan. Jonathan was willing to do anything to help David to live and to see God's purposes fulfilled for his life. Jonathan even knew that it meant that one day he wouldn't get to become king, but instead David would become king. But Jonathan wanted God's purpose to be fulfilled. And God can give us those kind of friends too. So I want to ask you today, what kind of friends do you have in your life? Do you have people that have been influencing you to make the right choices? Do you have people that would stand up and they would help you in fulfilling God's purpose for your life? Or instead, do you have friends that have maybe been bad influences? Maybe they get you to use language that you're not supposed to use, say, say words that are inappropriate or make fun of others. Maybe they've gotten you to watch things that you're not supposed to watch. Whatever it might be, those friendships aren't healthy and they're not going to push you closer to God. God wants us to have friendships that are, are healthy and they're going to help us to draw closer to him and fulfill the purposes that he has for our lives, just like Jonathan helped David in this Bible story. So if you're here today, I want you to begin to ask yourself, what kind of friends have I been hanging out with? Are they friends that are going to push me closer to God? Or have I been hanging out with people that have been bad influences and that haven't been helping me make the right choice? Let's go to God with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had together today. God, I ask that you would help us to search our hearts. What kind of people have we surrounded ourselves with? God, you can give us friends. You can give us the people that are going to push us and help us to make the right choices. You can surround us with people that are going to help us to follow you and the purposes that you have for our lives. But have we been choosing to find those people or have we been around those that have made bad choices and that are influencing us to do bad things? God, I ask that you would help us to choose to be around the right friends, to make the right friends that you can give us. We thank you for that in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in today and listening as we go through another lesson of our Good Life series. We'll see you back next week.